factors in the conceptual framework. Um, or, well, we're going to do the conceptual framework, but the conceptual framework has changed from last year to this year. Um, I don't think you guys would have dealt with it last year um, with the old one, no? No. Okay, so everything we're going to learn today is new. Luckily for you guys, you don't have to know what was old and you don't have to learn the changes. You guys just get a fresh start. Okay, awesome. So just a few things. Um, is this big enough? Should I make it a little bit bigger? Is that better? Oh, um, I don't have the slides printed for you guys. So just follow on here. I will put it up on Google Drive. Okay, these are some I just made. Um, I think there will be, there's a lot of ink, too much to print. Okay, is it fine if I put it up for you guys? Okay, all right, great. Okay, so the conceptual framework basically is not any one of the standards. Our standards, remember we said last week, we start, um, we've got IAS 1 through 41 and IFRS. 1 through 16. Now the conceptual framework is not one of those, but it is what everything else hinges on. Okay, It defines an asset and a liability, income expenses, it discusses, it discusses the recognition and measurement of all these things. Okay, So without it, you really can't, you really don't have a starting place. Um, but then again, it's also such a background little topic that it's not very examinable. They might ask you a few questions, but not a lot. Okay, but it's still really important. So they had a conceptual framework um, that they developed previously and they have now changed it. They've made a whole lot of improvements to it. Um, so what's new in this thing is that they now defined the measurement for us a whole lot better. Um, usually they didn't give us guidance on how to measure which measurement base to use, cost, historical cost, present value, um, future value, okay, uh, re replacement value. They didn't give us guidance on which one to use. Now they're giving us some guidance. They give some guidance on presentation and disclosure and as well as derecognition. They never said anything about when to derecognize an asset or liability. And as you guys can imagine, <laughs> that is pretty important. So now we've got some guidance on that. Definitions. They've updated the definition of an asset and a liability. And they have included or changed the recognition criteria for those two. They've also clarified these few concepts that are not very important for you guys to memorize. Okay. So let's just look at the objective of financial statements. Financial statements need to provide information about the reporting entity that is useful to the users, very important word, useful, in making decisions and providing resources to the entity. And that is resources, not recourses. Right. The users need to make decisions about whether to buy or sell debt instruments such as shares in this company. They need to make decisions about giving the company loans or settling those loans. And they need to make decisions about voting, how to use their influencing power. Okay, can I put the aircon on fast? Is that fine? Is everyone very cold? Or Okay. Ooh. 24. Okay, if you guys get cold, you're welcome to change it. But um, this is a lot of theory, so don't want you guys to fall asleep. Okay. The users um, need to assess the prospects of future net cash flows into the entity and they need to decide how to use their resources okay they need to judge what management is doing with their money and how they want to um, spend their money further okay let's think about it in terms of our government right we're all forced to pay taxes but we see what is going on so don't we don't really want to pay taxes and that is why so many people are actually not paying their taxes evading tax right because they see 
that management's stewardship of these assets are not going well. All right. If we had the option, if this was a company we could invest in, we would all decide to withdraw our money, right? Staying off. If you were quick enough, you saw, oh dear, there's trouble here. Withdraw all our money. Okay. That is what the financial statements are for. And if the financial statements give you the wrong information, you cannot make decisions like this, okay? So that is why there are so much um, psychos focusing, as the media is focusing on it, with KPMG, all those places. They made sure that financial statements went out that gave false information to users. And a lot of people lost a lot of money, okay? So that is why our financial statements, that is the objective of our financial statements, okay? to give users information that they can use for decision making, if we just say it simply now. All right. So the conceptual framework is basically just a basis of where to get that information and how we can determine whether it is useful or not. Okay. So for information to be useful, there are two fundamental things it needs to comply with. The first one is it needs to be relevant. Okay? If it's not relevant, it's not useful to you. If I tell you we're going to the movies tonight, but only if it doesn't rain, that's not really relevant because, okay, if it's an outside movie, yes, that makes sense. If it's inside movie, what does rain have to do with it? Absolutely nothing, okay? So it has to be relevant to the entity. And it has to faithfully present the, rep uh, faithfully represent the information. So basically what the standard says, it needs to represent what it purports to represent, and all, uh, let me make this one a bit bigger as well, hey? And all that means is it has to say what it wants to say. It shouldn't say something else. It shouldn't be, you know, those little small T's and C's in the bottom that you don't read. At the top it says 50% discount, at the bottom it says on the lesser of the two items. Okay, it has to clearly say what it wants to say. Cool. To be it, it needs to be relevant, to be capable of making a difference. To the, this, um, it is relevant if it, the information is capable in making a difference in the decisions that you would make. All right? So here we can also link the uh, subject of materiality. You guys have dealt with materiality in audit before, right? Do you have an idea of materiality? Yes. Okay, we'll quickly look at that just now. And then, um, capable of making a difference if it has predicted, predictive or conformatory value. Conformatory value is basically, we have confirmed this information, it is true, and using this information that we know is true, we can predict what will happen in the future. Okay? That will make it relevant. For example, um, let us say we have, we take a lot. We sell um, those little nail machines. You know, you get them. You put, your, you put your hand in, someone paints your nails. You bake it in the oven and it comes out. Okay, we sell those. All right? So we sell 100,000 of those every year. Okay? We buy these from China, so they're not the best quality, and a lot of them get sent back. Okay, um, over the past year, in 2017, 20,000 were sent back. In 2016, 10,000 were sent back, and so on. In 2016, that was 10% of our revenue. In 2017, that was 11%. So we have confirmed that people sent back these machines, and now we can look forward and say, okay, it is very probable that they will send back between 10 and 11% of the machines this year. Okay, that information is very relevant. Makes sense. Okay. Um, then, let's see if I have a slide on materiality. I do not. Let's quickly just look at materiality. Okay. A lot of the times, I don't know if any of you know, you probably wouldn't have ordered that you guys study full-time, right? Okay. So, our materiality level... is determined at the beginning of an audit, okay? This will always be entity 
specific. It will differ from entity to entity. It will depend on the entity's performance through the year. And a lot of times, the auditors will set a materiality figure and say, wham, bam, let's say it's 200,000. Anything below that, we don't care about. It's not really relevant. Anything more than that, that is relevant. That is what we care about. Okay. Um, then they argue that any um, disclosure that we do not make, any mistake we make over this amount could affect the decisions that the users will make. Okay. If the mistake is less than that or the misstatement is less than that, it might not necessarily re um, affect the decisions that they make. Okay. All right. Is everyone with me to hear? Cool. Okay, we said it faithfully represents. Um, okay, to the maximum extent possible for information to faithfully represent, it needs to be complete and neutral and free from error. Okay, if you've only given me a half a set of financial statements, I can't make any decisions based on that. It needs to be complete. Or if you only told me half the story of whatever happened, you and your brother had a fight, you to only told me your half of the story, you didn't say that you teased him and then he hit you, you just tell me that he hit you, okay, that's not complete information, I can't make a decision with that. That's to be neutral, you can't try and put your own agenda there in, in there, um, just state what happened and how it happened, and it must faithfully represent, uh, faithful representation is affected by the level of measurement uncertainty. Okay. So maybe sometimes um, you'll have information that is less me reliably measurable and that will be more faithfully represented. Okay, but that's very airy-fairy now. Let's leave that. Okay, so those two elements are very important to the usefulness of our financial statements. Information has to be relevant and it has to faithfully represent. Okay. There are four enhancing factors. Those four, are com they need to be comparable. Let's quickly think about this. If I have financials, they are usually shown year on year. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can compare the company's performance last year to the company's performance this year. Another thing that is nice if we can have it comparable is company to company. Okay, I'm comparing Edgar's with Woolworths, the clothing division, and I see, geez, Woolworths is doing a lot better. Let's invest in them rather. Okay, but then what would be the ultimate is we can, if we can go over industry and compare the mining industry to the retail industry. Wouldn't that be great? Now we can see where do we want to invest, mining or retail, and then we can narrow it down and say retail, okay, where, Woolies or Edgars, Edgars. Okay, so that is also what the standards of IFRS try to do. You guys will see with the new revenue standard, um, a lot of that has been compacted and um, generalized so that most of the companies will have the same accounting for revenue, okay, so that we can across industries um, compare the revenue figures and the performance of these companies. Okay. Then it needs to be verifiable. This is very much the same backward and forward looking. We saw it in the past. We can predict it for the future. Okay. It needs to be timely. It's not going to help you now to look at 2012's financial statement of any company and say, yes, I want to invest in them. Okay. You didn't get the information on time. It's not going to help you now. A lot has changed since 2012. And then they have to be understandable. This is a difficult one because that means that anyone, whether they studied accounting or not, needs to be able to understand them. And that assumption um, obviously assumes that everyone has a brain, everyone can think for themselves. And that is not always the case, okay? You guys have seen how stupid people can be. So, um, understandable. So these four enhancing are enhancing to the, under, the usefulness of our financial statements. So they can increase the usefulness, but they cannot make unuseful information useful. All right. 
Okay. Uh, then let's get 